What is going on everybody? Today we are here first of our explained series on YouTube. Today we are going to be talking about rear mounted turbos. First thing we're going to get into is the mechanics of how they work. That's why I have this diagram right in front of us. And after that we'll get into the pros and cons of what it is like to run that setup. If you are new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. If you look around, you'll see the build series, part unboxings, and then the explain series. So if you like learning a thing or two about a thing or two, hit that subscribe button and join the family. Now into the intro. first going to talk about the mechanics of a rear mounted turbo setup that will be illustrated by this diagram right here as you can see on this side I have the turbo and over on this side I have the engine and the intercooler now the shaded tubing is representing the hot side piping and the unshaded tubing is representing the cold side piping so basically what I'm explaining is how the exhaust um, gases flow through a whole setup like this. So how it works is the engine produces gases that would normally go out your exhaust if you had an NA setup. But what's going on now is your hot side piping is your exhaust. So the engine is uh, producing exhaust and it is going back to the turbo where the turbo then compresses it and sends it back to the engine through the cold side piping. Hey, that guy is wrong. So, just want to let you guys know, it is not the exhaust gases that go back through the cold side piping. I said that incorrectly. What I meant is the exhaust gases are what spins the turbine and the turbine compresses fresh air that gets sent back up to the engine. So don't confuse that, just in case you wanted to get on a technicality. They are, it is different. So it is not the exhaust gases that are being sent back up to the engine. It is freshly compressed air. All right? I'm doing all of this backwards. Sends the compressed gases back up to the engine through the cold side piping, through the intercooler, into the engine. So that's the basics of how exhaust flow works with a rear mounted setup. Very similar to uh, a normal engine mounted setup. But um, a big difference that's going to happen with a rear mounted setup is your oil lines. So with a normal setup, your oil is really close to the turbo because turbos need oil so that they don't explode. But with this setup, your turbo is so far in the back of the car that you're going to have to run some longer oil lines from your oil pan all the way back to the turbo um, just to allow lubrication of the turbo. So along with your engine being up here, you're also running oil lines from the front all the way to the back. Um, so that's the basic mechanics of how a rear mounted setup works. It's not difficult and it's really not different from a normal engine mounted setup other than everything is just further apart. Um, so now that we've got the basic mechanics down uh, we'll, we'll go into some pros and cons. Alright so con number one is turbo lag. This is, this is the big one that everybody fears with rear mounted setups. Rightfully so, because the air has to travel so far to get back up to the engine. Um, but, a lot of times this can be combated with a correct size turbo and correct piping size changes. Um, so, with, with turbos, the smaller it is, the quicker it spools. So with rear mounted setups, to combat turbo lag, uh, you will want to run a slightly smaller turbo, that way you're getting the spool. Alright, now, con number two is complex piping. So, in the diagram I showed earlier, it looked pretty simple because it was, it was straight back to the turbo and then from the turbo straight back up to the intercooler. However, as we know in cars and just building things, it is never that simple. So a lot of times, your exhaust system to get that turbo to get to the turbo with the hot side piping isn't always as simple as we would want it to be. It's not always just straight there and straight back. So sometimes those, those piping systems can get really complicated. 
And the last of the cons is complex oil systems. This one can be scary because oil is really important for turbos. And since you're going to have to run essentially an extra oil pump to run a rear-mounted turbo, it can get pretty complex. You're going to have to run long oil lines, you're going to have to get another oil pump, and uh, that can get a little intense. Alright, so pro number one is cooler air. Because of its long travel distance, when the air leaves the turbo, it actually has time to cool down a little bit when it's going through the piping back up to the engine bay. And because of this reason, little fun fact, you can run rear-mounted kits without intercoolers because the air will be cool enough by the time it gets to the engine bay. However, I recommend running an intercooler, just to be safe. Pro number two is cooler oil. So not only are you getting cooler air, but you're also getting cooler oil. Because all of the cool air that is running under the car while you are driving is cooling down the oil path and the oil lines um, just from uh, the coolness of the air. So that is a really good plus because turbos need oil to run and if that oil gets too hot it's not going to be a very good lubricator for the turbo. So you want your oil to stay cool. Hence why a lot of people on force induction setups run oil coolers. Alright, and pro number three and the last one of this video is no heat soak. So with turbos that are in the engine bay, they get so hot that they start to heat up the other components of the engine, which will reduce your performance. But because the turbo is now in the rear of the car, the heat of the turbo will not be affecting any of your engine components. Therefore, more consistent performance, which is what we all love. I want to thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you learned something about rear-mounted turbos. If you haven't yet, click that subscribe button. And you know what? Just because I'm interested about it, let me know what you guys think about rear-mounted turbos down in the comments. I would love to hear what you have to say. Thanks for watching this episode of Explained. Catch you in the next one.